can you solve this math challenge? Here's the question. Solve for the value of a raised to 11 plus b raised to 11, given that a plus b equals 1 and a squared plus b squared equals 2. Now, you can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. And now, let's answer this question together. So, given these two equations, a plus b equals 1 and a squared plus b squared equals 2, then our goal, our main goal, is to solve for the numerical value of a raised to 11 plus b raised to 11. Now, I provide two solutions for this kind of question. So, the first one Let's have the algebra approach. And the second one, the Newton's sum. So you can use algebra alone, you can use Newton's sum alone, or you can use both of them at the same time. Alright, so let's begin with our first method, which is solving the value of this a raised to 11 plus b raised to 11 using algebra. Okay, let's begin. First, let's get the first equation, a plus b equals 1. Now, what we're going to do is to square on both sides. And take note, when we expand a plus b raised to the power of 2, we get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, 1 raised to the power of 2, we know that this is just 1. Now, let's rearrange some terms a little bit. So, we have here 2ab plus a squared plus b squared. Now, why we do that? Because we know the value of a squared plus b squared. This is also given, and this is just 2. So, we can replace a squared plus b squared with 2. Now, let's solve for the value of a times b. So, let's subtract 2 on both sides. And if we do that, we get 2ab equals 1 minus 2, and 1 minus 2, this is just negative 1. Now, divide both sides by 2, we get that the product of a and b must be equal to negative 1 half. Now, this is very important in our solution. Next, let's get these two equations and let's multiply them. The purpose is to get the value of a cubed plus b cubed. Now, let's do that. Now, let's simplify. 1 times 2, this will give us 2. And if we multiply a plus b multiply by a squared plus b squared, you get something like a cubed plus a b squared plus a squared b plus b cubed. Now, this is very important, the a cubed plus b cubed. So, let's rearrange some terms a little bit. Now, in these two terms, let's factor out a times b. If we do that, we get a b multiplied by a plus b. Now, we have a value for a times b. This is negative one half. And we have also a numerical value for a plus b which is given and it is 1. So we can replace a b with negative 1 half and this a plus b with 1. Now let's simplify. Negative 1 half times 1, this is just negative 1 half of course. Now add 1 half on both sides to get the value of a cubed plus b cubed and we have 2 plus 1 over 2 and 2 plus 1 over 2 this will give us 5 over 2. Now we have the value for a cubed plus b cubed. All right. Next, let's get the second and the third equation. Now, our purpose is to multiply them again. And in this case, we can now find the value of a raised to the fifth power plus b raised to the fifth power. But before that, let's simplify first. 2 times 5 over 2, this will give us 5. And if we multiply the left-hand side of our equation, this will give us a raised to the fifth power. This is what we want. And b raised to the fifth power. So plus a squared b cubed plus a cubed b squared. Now let's rearrange some terms a little bit again. And from these two terms, let's factor out a squared b squared. And if we do that, we get a squared times b squared multiplied by a plus b. Now, Take note that a plus b, this is given, is already equal to 1. So, we can replace this with 1 later on. But, take note that a squared times b squared, this can be written as follows. We have a b raised to the power of 2. Now, we know a plus b is 1 and a times b is just negative 1 half. 
A times B is negative 1 half. Now, let's simplify. Negative 1 over 2 raised to the power of 2. This will give us 1 over 4. Now, subtract 1 fourth on both sides. And 5 minus 1 fourth. This will give us 19 over 4. This is now the numerical value of A raised to the fifth power plus B raised to the fifth power. Alright. Next, let's get the third equation. And what we're going to do here is to square this equation. So the purpose is to get the value of a raised to the 6th power plus b raised to the 6th power. Now, let's simplify a cubed plus b cubed raised to the power of 2. If we do that, we get a raised to the 6th power plus b raised to the 6th power plus 2 times a cubed b cubed. And on the right-hand side, we have 5 over 2 raised to the power of 2. Now, simplifying this, we get 25 over 4. Now, a cubed times b cubed, this can be written as a times b raised to the power of 3. Now, we know the value of a times b. This is, again, negative 1 half. So, we can replace this with negative 1 half. Now, let's simplify. Negative 1 half raised to the power of 3. This is just negative 1 over 8. And 2 times negative 1 over 8, this will give us negative 1 fourth. Now, add 1 fourth on both sides. This will give us a raised to 6 power plus b raised to 6 equals 25 over 4 plus 1 over 4. And 25 over 4 plus 1 over 4, this will give us 26 over 4. Now, we can simplify this. We can divide the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. And if you do that, you get 13 over 2. That is the numerical value of a raised to 6 power plus b raised to the 6 power. Now, we are almost done because... If we multiply a raised to the fifth power and a raised to the sixth power, you get a raised to the eleventh power. So what we're going to do here is to multiply these two equations. Now, if we multiply a raised to the fifth power plus b raised to the fifth power times a raised to the sixth power plus b raised to the sixth power, you get something like a raised to eleven plus a raised to the sixth power times b raised to the fifth power plus a raised to the fifth power times b raised to the sixth power plus b raised to the eleventh power. And this is what we want. Now, let's simplify first the right-hand side of our equation. 19 over 4 times 13 over 2, this will give us 247 over 8. Now, on the left side of our equation, let's rearrange some terms a little bit. From these two terms, let's factor out a raised to the fifth power times b raised to the fifth power. And we have a raised to the fifth power times b raised to the fifth power times a plus b. Now, we know a plus b is given, which is 1. So, we can replace this with 1. And a raised to the fifth power times b raised to the fifth power, we can rewrite this as a b raised to the fifth power. Now, we know... A times B, this is again negative 1 half. Now, negative 1 half raised to the fifth power or negative 1 half times negative 1 half times negative 1 half five times, you get negative 1 over 32. Now, add 1 over 32 on both sides and we get 247 over 8 plus 1 over 32. Now, take note, the denominator is not the same. So, why not multiply 247 over 8 by 4 over 4. Because we know 4 over 4 is just 1. Alright? Now, the numerator now becomes 988 and the denominator becomes 32. Now, since we have the same denominator, we can now add them. So, 988 plus 1, this will give us 989. And all over... 32, the denominator 32. And that is the numerical value of A raised to 11 plus B raised to 11. And that is the answer using algebra. Alright. So now, the next question is, how about the Newton sum? So do we get the same result? And of course, we get the same result. So now, let's find out how do we use Newton sum to answer this kind of question. Now, here's the definition of Newton's sum. So consider a polynomial P of x of degree n. So we have P of x equals a sub n times x raised to n plus a sub n minus 1 times x raised to n minus 1 all the way down to a sub 0. Let P of x equals to 0 having the roots 
x sub 1, x sub 2, up to x sub n. So, p sub k must be defined as x sub 1 raised to the power of k plus x sub 2 raised to the power of k and so on and so forth. Now, Newton's sum tells us, using this polynomial, Newton's sum tells us that we have a sub n times p sub 1 plus a sub n minus 1 equals 0 and so on and so forth. Now, for concrete, for more concrete example, let's have some polynomials. So, consider this polynomial p of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x minus 8 having a roots of r, s, and t. Now, the question here is to find the numerical value of r squared plus s squared plus t squared and r raised to the fourth power plus s raised to the fourth power plus t raised to the fourth power. Now, using the Newton sum, it tells us that p sub 1 plus 3 equals 0. So, as you notice, you just replace the numerical coefficient of this p so raised to the power of 3 with p sub 1, which is p sub 1 must be equal to r plus s plus t. Now, the second, we can now solve for the value of p sub 2, which is equivalent to r squared plus s squared plus t squared. So, we have p sub 2 plus 3 times p sub 1 because on the first equation, we can now get the value of p sub 1 and plus 8. Now, your question is how do we get this 8? Because this is just for the numerical coefficient of x multiply by 2. That is the definition of the Newton sum. Alright? Now, how about the third equation? The third equation says we have p sub 3 or the, this is the equivalent of r cubed plus s cubed plus t cubed and plus 3p sub 2. So, you can now use the value of p sub 2. Now, plus we have 4, the numerical value of x, times p sub 1. Now, we have here minus 24. And how do we get minus 24 equals to 0? Now, minus 24 because we have negative 8 ma multiply by 3. Alright? So, negative 8 times 3, you have negative 24. And so on and so forth. So, we can say that p sub 4 plus 3 times p sub 3 plus 4 times p sub 2 minus 8 times p sub 1 equals to 0. And using this Newton sum, you can now get p sub 5 or equivalent to r raised to the p power plus s raised to the p power plus t raised to the p power and so on and so forth. Now, we will use this concept, the Newton sum, in our question. So let's do that. All right. Now, the question is, what is the polynomial or the equation that corresponds to this given? So, we know that a plus b equals 1, and we know also that a, b must be equals to negative 1 half. So, we will use the concept of sum and product of the roots. Now, since we know the sum and we know the product, we can say that this polynomial can be written as x squared minus the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots. So, in this case, our polynomial is just a quadratic equation. So, we know the sum. This is just 1. This is given. We know the product. This is negative 1 half. So, we can replace those values. And the product is negative 1 half. Now, let's simplify. x squared minus 1 times x minus 1 half. This is just equivalent to x squared minus x minus 1 half equals 0. That is the equivalent of our polynomial p of x. Now, using Newton's sum, we can say that p sub 1 minus 1, because the numerical coefficient of x is 1, equals 0. So, in this equation, you can now solve for the value of p sub 1, or we have a plus b. This is the sum of the roots. Next, Using again the concept of Newton's sum, we can say that p sub 2 minus p sub 1 minus 1 half multiply by 2. So we can now simplify this, negative 1 half times 2, this is just negative 1. Now we can keep going. We can continue this 
to solve for the value of P sub 11, and that is what we want. Now, P sub 3, using Newton's sum, using this, we have P sub 3 minus P sub 2 minus 1 half times P sub 1 equals 0. You can continue this. You can get P sub 4. You can get P sub 5. And you can get P sub 6. Now, let's solve for the value of P sub 1. P sub 1, using this equation, if we add 1 on both sides, you get P sub 1 must be equal to 1, which is already given because A plus B is just 1. We all know that. Now, how about P sub 2? We know this is also given, which is 2. Now, let's check using Newton's sum if we get the same thing. Now, we know P sub 1 is 1, so you can use this P sub 1, the value of P sub 1, to get the value of P sub 2. Now, negative 1 minus 1, this is just negative 2. Add 2 on both sides. You get that P sub 2 must be equal to 2. And that is our expectation because A squared plus B squared, we know this is just 2. Next, how about P sub 3? For A cubed plus B cubed, we know that this is 5 over 2. Now, let's check using Newton's sum if we get the same thing. Now, P sub 2. This is just 2, and P sub 1, this is 1. So we can replace all those values. Now, negative 2 minus 1 half, this is just negative 5 over 2. Now, add 5 over 2 on both sides, and sure enough, we get P sub 3 equals 5 over 2, and that is what we expect to get. Next, how about P sub 4? We don't have P sub 4 on this one, or simply A raised to the fourth power plus B raised to the fourth power, but using Newton's sum, we get this value. Alright, so using the value of P sub 3, which is 5 over 2, and P sub 2, which is 2, we can solve for the value of P sub 4. Now, let's simplify. We have 1 half, negative 1 half times 2, this is just negative 1. Now, Negative 5 over 2 minus 1, this is just negative 7 over 2. Add 7 over 2 on both sides, you get that P sub 4 equals 7 over 2. Next, to get the value of P sub 5 or A raised to the P power plus B raised to the P power, we can use the value of P sub 4 which is 7 over 2 and P sub 3 which is 5 over 2. Simplify again. Negative 1 half times 5 over 2, this will give us negative 5 over 4. Negative 7 over 2 minus 5 over 4, this will give us a value of negative 19 over 4. Now, add 19 over 4 on both sides, and we get that the value of P sub 5, or A raised to the P power plus B raised to the P power equals 19 over 4. And that is what we want using algebra. Now, how about P sub 6? We can use the value of P sub 5, that is 19 over 4, and P sub 4, which is 7 over 2. Now, you can see the concept of Newton's sum, and you can replace those values to get the value of P sub 6. Simplifying this, negative 1 half times 7 over 2, this will give us negative 7 over 4. Negative 19 over 4 minus 7 over 4, if we combine this, you get negative 26 over 4. Simplifying this, you have 13 over 2. Now, add 13 over 2 on both sides, you get that P sub 6 equals 13 over 2, or A raised to 6 plus B raised to 6. Now, you can keep doing this. You can get P sub 7 up to P sub 11. That is what we want to find. But you can use both. You can use Newton's sum first. And then use algebra because you know already the value of P sub 5 and P sub 6. If you multiply this, you get A raised to 11 and B raised to 11. So you can use both concepts to answer this kind of question. And I think this is a good place to stop. And sure enough, that our answer to this question is 989 over 32. And as always, we are done.